Okay, students, so this is part two of the lesson on solving systems of equations by elimination. So let's go ahead and move on to our next example. So again, I'm looking for additive inverses. Um, before I do, let's make sure our X's are lined up above our X's, our Y's are lined up and our constants are lined up and our equal signs. So everything is lined up perfectly. Now, when I look at the X value, I notice that if I multiply four by something, I can't get six. If I multiply six by something, I can't get four. So just multiplying one of the equations is not gonna work for my X's. Okay, how about the Y's? If I multiply five by something, I can't get seven. If I multiply seven by something, I don't get five. So I have deduced that we're gonna to have to multiply both of these equations to get additive inverses, okay? So the easiest way to do that is just to multiply each equation by the opposite coefficient. Here's what I mean by that. I'm gonna take this first equation and I'm gonna multiply it by six because the coefficient of X in the second equation is six. And then I'm gonna take the second equation and I'm gonna multiply it by four, actually negative four, so that they're opposites. Okay, let's see what happens when I do that multiplication. Let's look, use blue and green here. So I'm gonna write this one right over here. Six times four would give me 24 X. Six times five would give me 30 Y. And six times six would give me 36, okay? Now let's take a look at this second equation. Negative four times six would give me a negative 24 X. Notice we've got our additive inverse there. Negative four times negative seven would give me a positive 28 Y. And negative four times negative 20 would give me a positive 80. Okay, let's go ahead and add these two equations together. Now that we have additive inverses right here on our X terms. So let's add. All right, so when I add top to bottom, I end up eliminating the X. Okay, I've got a zero here, plus 30 plus 28 is 58Y. And then 36 plus 80 is 116. Now, just like in previous examples, we'll divide by 58 to isolate the Y. And so when we do, we see that Y equals two. Wow, that was pretty convenient. So we know part of our solution set, the Y value is two. So now to find our X value, we'll choose one of these equations and substitute the Y in. You always want to use the original equations though. Don't use the ones that you multiplied because if you made some simple error right here, it's gonna throw everything off. So I think the easiest one's gonna be probably this first one since there's no subtraction in it. So I'm gonna use four X plus five times two equals six. So let's see, that's gonna be four X plus 10 equals six. And then from there, we'll solve it just like any other two-step equation by subtracting 10 from both sides. And then we'll divide by four to get our X by itself. And here we see that X equals negative one. Now we always wanna check it in the other equation just to make sure we didn't make some crazy mistake in our multiplication or something. So our question is, is six times negative one minus seven times two, is that in fact equal to negative 20? So we're taking our, our X value and we're putting it in place of the X and we're taking our Y value and we're putting it in place of the Y. And then we're gonna see if this actually works. So that's gonna give me negative six minus 14 equals negative 20. 
And I know that subtraction is the same thing as adding the opposite. So negative six plus negative 14 is in fact negative 20. When I add those together, so this is true. Therefore, this is in fact our solution. Okay. All right, let's scroll on down and take a look at a word problem. Yes, there are word problems that we have to tackle. I know you guys hate word problems, but we've got to tackle. All right, so let's see, let's see what happens here. During their last game, the astronaut War Eagle scored seven times. Okay, that seems important for a total of 41 points. So if I stop right there, I can already see two situations going on here where I'm gonna need two different equations. Okay, I've got the number of scores is the first situation that they tell us about. And then I see the number of points is the second part of this problem that they're, they tell me about. Okay, let's read on. They score seven points for each touchdown and three points for each field goal. Well, we kind of know that. If you're familiar with American football, you know that, 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 that kind of information. All right, let's look at the question. Write and solve a system of equations to find the total touchdowns and total field goals. So they're wanting us to find how many touchdowns and how many field goals. Okay? So that tells me what my variables are. So I'm going to let, uh, let's let T equal the number of touchdowns. And let's let F equal the number of field goals. And I'll just abbreviate that with FG, okay? FG stands for field goals. All right, so, so we need an equation for the number of scores. Well, they told us that they scored a total of seven times. Right up here at the top. So that would be the number of touchdowns plus the number of field goals equals seven. And let me write in here, scores. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is points. How many points did they score? Well, they scored a total of 41 points. How did they score points? Well, they got, since we're talking about points, how many points for a touchdown? Well, they score seven points for a touchdown times T would tell me how many points total that they scored for touchdown, seven T. And then for field goals, field goals are three points apiece. So three F would tell me their total score for field goals. So now I've got my situation, my two systems of, or my two equations for my system. Now I can solve it. So let's see. Um, I noticed that I don't have additive inverses here. So I'm going to multiply this first equation. Change color. I don't like that. I'm going to multiply this first equation by, let's say, negative three. I think I'm going to multiply by negative three and eliminate the Fs or the field goals and just solve for touchdowns first. Okay, so when I do that, when I multiply, I'm gonna write that answer down here, by the way. Negative three times T would be negative three T. Negative three times F would be negative three F and negative three times seven would be negative 21. Okay, so let's add top to bottom and see what happens. Notice I've got my T's lined up my F's lined up, my constants, and oh, let me put my equal sign in here. Line it up as well. Okay, so 7T minus 3T is going to give me 4T. I just eliminated my field goal, so I don't need to write that down. 41 minus 21 leaves me with 20 points. Okay, so four touchdowns equals 20 points. That means that they scored five touchdowns.
Okay. Now let's take a look at how do I find out the number of field goals? Well, just like we've done in every other uh, example, we're going to take and use the other equation or, or one of the equations. This is the easiest one to use. And we're going to plug this in or substitute this in for T and find out how many field goals. So five plus F equals seven. And this is pretty simple math. So we know that if we had five touchdowns and a total of seven scores that we must have two field goals. Okay. All right, so let's jump down here. I want you to try the your turn problem for the Titusville Terriers. Okay, so let's see how that one worked out. So it's a very similar problem. We can see that we have um, touchdowns plus field goals for a total of five scores. And then we have seven points for a touchdown times the number of touchdowns. That gives us the total score for touchdowns plus three points for field goal times the number of field goals. That tells us how many points for field goals equals 27 points. So again, to solve this, we need to multiply this by either set negative seven or negative three. Again, I think I'm going to do negative three just so that I can solve for touchdowns first. So when I do that and I add those together, I end up with 4t equals, kind of got ahead of myself there, didn't I? I need to multiply first. So let's see, that's going to give me a negative 3t minus 3f equals negative 15. Now let's add those together. Mr. Boy getting a little ahead of himself. 4t equals, let's see, 27 minus 15. I believe that's going to give us 12 points difference. And then we'll divide by 4. And t equals 3. So we can see that the Titusville Terriers scored three touchdowns. And so that would mean that f would have to be 2 because, because 3 plus something is five, so F would have to be two. So that would be two field goals that they scored. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do one more example with you guys and then let you guys get started on some classwork. Okay, so let's see, we've got Sean and Roberta went shopping for football cleats and practice uniforms. So right here I can see there are two things that they purchased, football cleats, and practice uniforms. Okay. Let's jump down here to the question without even reading the rest. Let's see what, assuming the uniforms and the cleats cost the same amount, right? Solving the equation to find the cost. We, they want us to find the cost of one pair of cleats and one uniform. Okay. So let's see. We got Sean and we got Roberto. We need an equation for each guy. Just to make this simple, I'm going to do S for Sean and R for Roberto. And um, let's see, what do we want our variables to be? Um, let's use C equals the number of cleats. Since we're asked to find number of, number of pairs. Got to buy those in pairs. You can't buy a single cleat. And then let's let you be the, uh, oh, no, that's not number, is it? That We're looking for the cost. Cost for a pair of cleats and cost for one uniform. We know how many. They told us how many they bought. Okay, so for Sean, how do we put Sean's together? Well, let's see here. Sean spent $301. So now let's ask ourselves, how did he get to $301? Well, he bought one pair of cleats. That's his total cost for the cleats. Plus, he bought two uniforms. So that'd be two U. Okay. 
Now, let's see. Why did Roberto spend? Okay, he spent $476.75. Wow, he must have bought a little bit more. And we see that he actually did. He bought two pair of cleats plus three uniforms. Okay. So let's see. We need to do – this is in, in, in the right form to do elimination. So uh, I think I'm going to multiply this first equation by negative 2. And when I do that, I get negative 2c minus 4u equals, let's see, negative 602. Now, this is going to look kind of weird to start with, um, but trust me, it'll work out. Okay, so let's add top to bottom. Let's see, that eliminates our Cs. So I have a negative U equals, oh boy, I don't know what that is right off the top of my head. Let me get my calculator out here. Okay, so let's see, what was that problem actually? I want 476.75 minus 602, and that gives me $125.25. And that's negative. Now notice, I need to divide by negative one. So this is actually going to come out to be a positive number for those of you paying attention to your number sense. So let's see, a uniform costs $125.25. So how could we figure out how much a pair of cleats is? Well, I'm going to come back up here because this is 1C, and that's the easiest thing. I won't have any division when I solve it. So 1C plus two uniforms at $125.25 a piece is going to equal $301. Well, let's see. C plus two times $125.25. That's $250. And excuse me. And I'm making a mess of that. And 50 cents. Okay, so now to solve this, we'll just subtract our 250 and 50 cents from both sides. Again, I'll pull my calculator out. I've got, let's see, I've already got my negative. Let's do that times two to get the 250. And then I'll just simply add that to the $301. And that gives me that a pair of cleats was, oh, I already lost that number, $50.50. Okay, so cleats are $50.50. Um, uniforms are $125.25. Okay, guys, go ahead and try the your turn problem. And then, uh, and then check it. Hmm. So I see this one ends up being zero equals zero, which means there are infinite solutions to this system. All right, guys. Again, if you uh, got something out of today's video, click subscribe.
you click the bell, you'll get notifications for other videos that I put out there on the web. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day.